you know, we don't have another 10 years to give anymore. We're done. Like, yeah. we yeah. give it up now, we never get Florida back. We talked about Cindy Polo. So um, I met Cindy last year, and she told me about fracking. Because my house used to shake. My, well, my house still shakes. It shakes like mm -hmm. every day or every couple of days, around about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, is that what happened? Tell us about fracking and what are your thoughts on that? And are you going to, um, you know, at least co-sponsor some bills that, um, that's dealing with that issue? Yeah. So, um, Cindy, uh, Representative Polo. Sorry, I don't want to get too. too I shouldn't get, I shouldn't uh, get friendly. <laughs> I should have said Rep Polo too. Sorry. Uh, she's, 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 she, she is one of the, uh, my closest friends. Um, and we, she's my campaign wife. Um, but she's been doing amazing work, work with um, Mind Blasting. Um, and I plan on going to Tallahassee and, you know, being her partner um, and making sure that we, we address that. The legislation that's been passed so far is just, oh, we're going to test to see what the radius is and how dangerous. It is. We know what's happening. We see the proof. I follow the Mind Blasting page on Facebook. I mean, we see the cracks. People are freaking out. I work on 47th Street at Northwest 107th Avenue in Doral, right? That's pretty far removed from, you know, the areas in Miramar and Northwest Miami-Dade where they're having the mind blasting issues. I feel it. There are some days where that blast is so strong that I feel the ground shake a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, that's weird. And I go on my Facebook and bam, I, I just got a notification, notification from people that are dealing with it. You know, people are losing their houses. People are losing their houses. People are having damage to their properties mm -hmm. and they're not being able to be given money back for it. Yeah, yeah. Because the legislator hasn't acted on it. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of our Republican opponents are getting money from White Rock quarries. The same people that are destroying our houses. So we need to make sure that we have representatives that aren't bought by these co corporations and aren't afraid of standing up and saying the truth. Right. You know? And a lot of people don't know, because I literally never knew that. And I lived, I've lived in my house since 2001. I just knew, I used to tell people that they was like, girl, you crazy. I'm like, no, for real, it does. No, and then no. when I saw her at this legislative wrap up last year, she was talking about it. I'm like, that explains like why my house shakes like all the time, you know? And you know, so yeah, we definitely need to put shed light on that, put awareness on it. And people need to know like, they think that doesn't matter to them. It does matter to you. Cause if you do get a crack in your foundation and your house is worthless, who's going to pay for it, right? You go sue those guys and you'll just spend, you know, however long in litigation and probably get nowhere and, and, and spend up, spend up a whole bunch of money. So those, are, those things are also very important. And you, you, the other thing that you talked about is voter protection and that's so important. Right. And even now, so we, you know, we, the democratic, party spent like uh like probably the last year or so encouraging people to vote by mail you know because you know and we that was even before we knew that we we're gonna have a, a covid pandemic happening we we're encouraging people to vote by mail now it's getting scary right some people got their ballots they sent them out early we're getting closer to the date we still have like a lot of covid numbers are high but people are afraid to send stuff through the mail right so you know what what um Tell us more about what it is that you want to do. Um, is it safe for people to continue to send their stuff in the mail right now? Or do you think they should need to drive it down to the SOE's office and kind of drop it off or something if it's, something, if it's um, an option for them? Um, so number one, I would say we are running horribly out of time for you to send your vote by mail ballot through the mail. And that is just something I would tell anybody in every election when we're nearing like the one week mark. Because um, you want to make sure it gets there on time. And you never know. Um, We've been hearing the issues with uh, mail carriers not being able to take overtime and mail being backed up. But the regular things, it's raining. Something happened. Their route got disconnected. I don't know. Uh, you just want to make sure you have at least five days for your mail ballot to get there and be signed and be okay. And then enough time for them to call you and say, hey, look, the signature is not real good. We need some more information. Give yourself that time. Luckily this year, um, we're going to see drop boxes at all the early voting locations. Um, so where you can sign your ballot, you can put in the information that you need, and you can drop it off at that box, and it'll go straight to the SOE's office. You don't have to go all the way to the SOE's office to drop off your mail-in ballot. Um, so we have options. Um, my number one priority is just making it easier for people to vote. Um, that's going to be my number one priority, because obviously we, we see, you know, steps being taken to make sure that people don't vote. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we're going to have to be on the lookout for, especially for the general election, 
is what polling places are not going to be opened. Um, and that's also something I'm trying to track down for the primary election, just to make sure that all the polling places are going to be open. Because you don't want them to say, oh, well, it was a nursing home, so we're not going to, we're just going to move everybody from here over there. Yeah. You know, that happened to me once. I, that happened to me on my first election, which was Kerry, um, Kerry and Bush. Oh. You know, a horrible election to have as your first yeah, election. Yeah, yeah. Um, because me being idealistic, 18 years old, I'm like, oh, well, they're for sure going to vote Kerry, right? Like, <laughs> everybody hates Bush. No, nope, not really. Nope, didn't yeah. <laughs> um, And I went to my polling place and they're like, no, it changed. Yes. Yeah. Nobody told me. That's what happened to my mom in the primaries this year. Like she, she vote, she just started voting, and you know, because I'm, I'm, my parents are immigrants. I'm an immigrant too. I sometimes I forget, but I'm also an immigrant too. Um, but we've been here for so long that it's like you know. But I'm also an immigrant. So my mom, like she go, we, I had my sister take her because it was on my kid's birthday. So I was like, I'm having a party. Take mommy to go vote. I sent her somewhere, and that wasn't her polling place. I'm like, she's been voting here since like 2016. What do you mean? And you know, we ended up having to like just kind of scramble to get her to go to the other location but who knew right but I mean you have to look it up like and if you're used to going to one place you don't think you need to look up and then the other thing the other tricky thing they did was when they had the um the early voting they changed the times because well, I remember it always being seven to seven for two wow. weeks right it, it was like one day it was at 11 to four then the next day it was from eight to three so if you didn't have that list you wouldn't have known so we went and I went to try to take her early and when we got there I said oh no it ended at like four o'clock today you know and even when I tried to vote in Miramar I thought it closed at either six or seven they're like oh no we closed at five I'm like this is crazy and Miami Dade is already early voting um, Broward doesn't even start until Saturday like yeah what is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, so that's my so so that's my that's always been my issue with my district. Uh, Miami Dade is a full two weeks, um, and then Broward starts on Saturday. Collier starts on Saturday also, um, but then Collier finishes the next Saturday, and then Broward finishes the next Sunday with Miami Dade. Yes, I would like to make it so that the whole state has two weeks of early vote, um, just to make sure people are able to vote. Um, also, the universal vote by mail. Right now, in the state of Florida, it's illegal for a supervisor of elections to send you a vote by mail ballot if you haven't requested one. Yes. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Um, you know, it, it's been shown, especially after the 2018 election, that if somebody has a vote by mail ballot present in their house, they are maybe 40% more likely to vote. And that's across all spectrums. Mm -hmm. Black, white, Hispanic, young, old, doesn't matter. Um, they have the ballot in their house. You can do the research. For your for for your ballot you can fill it out before you go to the mm -hmm. polling place you can drop it off you can send it in we need to give people as many options as possible so that they are able to vote and the most important thing is that we need to go and we need to pass amendment four the way that it was supposed to be passed exactly. without getting fines and fees and all this bs that they were trying to do um which i will go back to trash talking the legislator because that's exactly what they do we pass an amendment, we tell them what we want, and they're like, yeah, but you know what? I think wrong. this is what you meant. <laughs> you didn't know what you really want? Yeah, you didn't mean that. Yes, what you yes. meant was this. Wait, 65% of the people meant uh -huh. that, right? That wasn't even like, no, 50%, it was 65% of the people meant that. So yeah, that was pretty clear. And now they're making it harder for you to put something on the ballot. Yes. For an amendment. Right. But the and issue is that in our state, we have to pass ballot amendments to get things that we need. Mm -hmm. That's why the minimum wage is on the, amend is, is on the ballot this year. Um, that th this is the reason why we have to do ballot amendments because the legislators are not doing their jobs. They're not doing it. And then, but, the, but remember that in 2018, they had all these bundled bills, right? It was like, if you, did you want the casino? Do you want this? And you're like, well, I kind of want half of that, but I don't want the rest of it. But like, if you wanted that half, you had to vote for the whole thing. So that's another thing that I think they said that they're okay, not letting exactly. bundle those things anymore. But that was the craziest thing. I'm like, what is this? Like, how these things don't even match? Like, why are they on the same... Why, they, why, why is it the same amendment? And it's dealing with four or five different things that are completely unrelated, as far yeah. as I see. Because Florida. Yeah, it's Florida. Yeah, Florida. <laughs> it's Florida. <laughs> it's definitely Florida. So, that, so, that, so we want to we do that, and we, we definitely have to get this voted um, situation. Because even back in 2000, you know, when we had the contested Bush-Gore election, right? That was in 2000, and then it came down to the Secretary of State. You know, I ain't going to say she did something, but you know... <laughs> 
she ended up getting, she got a new job after that, you know, after Bush one, all of a sudden she got a gig in DC. So, you know, I don't know. So <laughs> just one of those, plus, we have to do better. We really, um, we have That's to. That's a basic message. We have to do better. And we have to do better. We all deserve better. Don't we? Yes. Like, don't we look around and we're just like, man, enough. Enough. Yes. And I feel like, you know, with everything that's been going on with the COVID response um, and Black Lives Matter, um, and it's just, I've seen so many people be activated for the first time that have never been activated before. Yes. You know, that they understand. And this is just your first step. Voting is just your first step of making change. You know, second step, hold us accountable. I want to be your state representative. And there's one thing that I have different from all my other opponents. I'm used to having a boss. I'm used to having to go and answer back and get a progress report and get a review. That's how I work. That's what I do. So I fully expect to go to Tallahassee and work in favor of the people of 105. And if you don't like the way I do it, and if you don't like what I'm doing, then kick me the hell out. Yep, yep, yep. That is up to you. Yes. You need to do that, but you need to hold me responsible. Yes, and that's another thing that um that's why some a lot of the um, some of the young kids I don't want to call them I shouldn't call them kids right so some of the young men and women are running because you know they're people that have had these positions forever and you know they're like you know campaign season you start seeing their faces they're talking about all these fantastic things they're gonna do then they go back and all of a sudden you're like but I thought homeboy said he was gonna go do this I thought you know and and nothing happens and then but people get so comfortable and they're just afraid because you know like so you know this whole thing about like stick with the devil that you know instead of the devil you don't know but some yeah. It's like, you know what, I'm, I, I, you can't keep pimping me, dog. I have to just try something different, right? Because uh, particularly if the person has consistently, you know, not done the things that they said they were going to do when they were given a position for however long ago. And, I, and I'm not telling people who to vote for. Um, vote for. We're really here putting out the message. But this is very, this is a very interesting moment in American history. This is a very good time. You know, it's a lot of progressives that are running for different positions. There are a lot of progressives on the ballot. And there are people that are really talking about things that are affecting everyday people, which is which is rare to me, right? Like, you know, they talk about all the, they give those broad strokes of the issues, we're gonna do this. But there's a lot of people that are running now that's getting into the nitty gritty of the things that are um, that are going on. So it's, it's, it's very important, you know? And it's important that not only are we addressing the issues, but we're addressing how we're gonna fix them. Yeah. You no, know, I, 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 am, I am one guy, you know, when I started running in 2018, um, I had the, the, the imposter syndrome going yeah. on a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. This is, this yeah. is crazy. Uh, so I, I, I always overcompensate. Um, so whenever I walk into a room and I'm going to talk about policy, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for that policy. Um, and even if I'm not going to be the one that introduces the bill, because it's very important, you know, I'm still going to be a freshman when I get to Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be the one that passes the Medicaid expansion. And I don't know if I'm going to be the one that passes the anti-discrimination um, bill to protect the LGBTQ plus community. But I know I'm going to be standing right by the people that are going to do it. And I know for a fact that sometimes something is so important, something is so needed, that you don't need uh, the credit for it. You can give it to someone else. You can make sure that they push it past the finish line. Because at the end of the day, what matters is that we get stuff done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the last thing that you, um, the last bill that you want to talk about that I thought was interesting that you want to um, talk about the air quality and the water quality. I spoke to a uh, couple of the other um, young men that were running and they were talking about the aquifers, like, you know, like FPNL is doing something and they're um, putting the, our drinking waters at risk. Are you familiar with any of that? And are you going to um, sign on to um, do things to kind of push uh, us, you know, our water quality and all of that stuff um, forward? Yeah, so um, the number one thing that we have to start talking about is septic tanks. Um, we are living on top of septic tanks that are about to fail. Um, and when a septic tank fails, you're pretty much swimming in your own, you know, remnants. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something important. And the problem is that we're, we're taking uh, baby steps on that. Um, they're just starting to address it around Lake Okeechobee, which is important because that was one of the causing effects of the blue, green, and red tide the blue green out during the red tide. But we need to start looking at it in a statewide level. It's gonna cost a lot of money. It's gonna cost a lot of money. But we can't let these septic tanks fail because then that's going to seep into our aquifers and that's gonna seep into our water quality. We're not gonna be able to drink our own water because we're going to have 
people's remnants inside of it. In the water, that's yeah. Thing. And that's not a good thing. And people need to understand that. Like, you know, and so a lot of times folks don't even think about this. And it's like, these are all things that are important. It's expensive, but you need to spend that money because the consequence, if you don't, is far worse than the money that you're, yeah. um, you're going to spend in order to avoid this, um, this, um, this thing from happening. Yeah, you know? and that's the problem. So there's, there's a lot of homeowners that know that their septic tanks aren't doing well, but it's a lot of money to replace them. We need to make sure that those that those homeowners have some kind of resources to fall back onto if, they, if they're able to switch over their septic tanks. Just this past session, our current state representative passed on appropriations to give a million dollars to Naples to fix some of the sewers and the septic tanks. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of her appropriations were for Monroe County, which is the district she's running in now. One appropriations got vetoed, and it was the one for her current see for her current district the issue is that we have representatives that are just thinking about what their next step is yes. where they're going next yes that so leave us behind and they leave the issues behind yes we can't have that anymore we yeah. literally cannot have that anymore yeah so and we I, and need Sorry, but, I didn't cut you off. But um, so I have my office is um in Miami Shores, and I almost bought a house in Miami Shores, and they they're really they that most of that stuff is septic there, right? Like that's um one of the I mean I, I know that's not part of your district, but that's definitely one of those cities that most of the that's how their sewer system is working yeah. is it's all um um septic um situation. So it's definitely something that people need to think about. You know, even though they, again they don't think it's important, but it is a it's a it's a it's an issue perfect. that's dealing that's with your everyday life. And perfect and, example is look look at what happened in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. How many times in like two months did we see like a whole pipe burst? Mm -hmm. And yep. literally they were. There was poop on the streets. Yep, and there was boil water orders or whatever it is, right? I mean, <laughs> like, this is happening already. It's already we're, happening. We're already behind the ball on that, you know? Yeah. So we need to take action. Um, so that's what, with water quality and also making sure that um, we used the Amendment 1 funding from, you know, a couple years ago to make sure that the water is flowing correctly from, um, naturally from Lake Okeechobee all the way to the Everglades. Um, you know, there's so many things that we need to focus on. Um, that I, I, I can't go, <laughs> I'll, I'll go into get, another hour. We can't get into all, yes, we definitely can't get into all of it in an hour, but um, um, it's, um, it's definitely important. And there are other things that you, you know, that, um, that I think you probably want to get, um, get involved with, because a lot, you know, we have like a homeless problem um, in South Florida. People can't afford to live here. You talked about that too, about, you know, doing housing so people can kind of, you know, live in the areas where they work. And, you know, we talked a, a little bit about that um, in the beginning. Uh, we talked about the health insurance, which I think is a, a really a big deal expanding Medicaid, all of these things are stuff that we, we, we want to see. So like if people heard, um, like what they heard about you today, how can they get in touch with you? How can they volunteer? How can they donate money to your campaign? Yeah, so you can go to our website. It's Javier4FOR105.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Javier for Florida. On Twitter, it's Javier number four and then Florida spelled it out. And literally, my email is Javier at JavierFor105.com. And my cell phone number is 305-297-6069. If a candidate is not willing to give you their personal information, their personal contact information, so that they can talk to you personally, don't trust them. <laughs> yeah yeah because it's important and and we hope you know that um if and when you win you're going to continue that open door um policy and you know uh, and just keep continue to represent the people because all of the things you talked about today are stuff that i have like firsthand experience with most of the people i know have firsthand experience and i have like um and i know people on the whole range of the spectrum i know real real poor people and i know people that are doing extremely well and a lot of the issues that you touched on are something that they all um can definitely benefit from and thank you so much. Um, anything else you want to say? You want to make a closing statement? You told them how to get in touch with you. Make your closing statement. Tell them what it is you're gonna do, and then you know we'll go ahead and sign off on this. On this, but it was a pleasure talking to you. I like we. I had a good time Great. talking to you. I don't know if you had fun talking to me, but we had a combo. We had a conversation. This is what I like to do. <laughs> yeah, you let yeah. me go off. I like it. Uh, yeah. But thank you, Sandra, for having me today. I really, really appreciate it, and I had a great time. Um, but, you know, it's important that everybody goes out there and votes. Make sure you vote for a candidate that can bring real change, someone that's been in the community. I've been an activist um, for the LGBTQ plus community for 17 years, um, and I've been act um, an activist and advocating for women's rights and workers' rights for all that time. I've been part of the Democratic Party my whole life. 
Um, I've been a precinct committee man and just recently a legislative liaison for the Miami Dade DC. Get someone that's been in the fight with you. Get someone that's been there with you on the streets, making sure that we bring change. And let's take that activism and let's take that advocacy and I send it to Tallahassee. Oh, and you know, I have to, um, I do have to ask you a couple of things, right? Because oh. you originally told me that you had Cuban parents. So how was yeah. that being a Democrat with um, Cuban parents? <laughs> okay, so number one. Because you know, some people are like, no, he low-key make it like he a Democrat. If he has like two Cuban parents, uh, uh, that dude ain't no Democrat. <laughs> right. So just to make it clear, <laughs> we do exist. There are Cuban Democrats. Yeah, there are Cuban Democrats that, right. that from yeah. Miami. <laughs> uh, so my mom, so my mom is like the best mom in the world. Um, she will, if, if I'm like, hey, look, I'm gonna like just jump off that bridge. She'll be like, you're gonna do great. You're gonna be the best one there. Um, so she's always been 100% supportive. My dad, eh, a little <laughs> there. Uh, but I'm very lucky to have a very supportive family. Um, you know, even when I was coming out, they were always so good to me. Um, and supportive and anything I've done and all this craziness. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna bring you guys into this campaign and I'm putting out like pictures on mailers and they're like, okay. <laughs> okay. <my God."> uh, <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, we have differences of opinion um, in my family, but we're family. Yes, you know? your family. Yeah. Yep. It, it, and our family unit is our family unit. It's a very small and compact family unit. And, you know, my mom, my sister, my brother, and my sister's family, and it's just us. Um, but we're strong and we're mighty, and yes. we've been through it. We've been through stuff. No, and they understand. They understand, and you and you know, thank you for fighting a good fight, and you know, trying to um, you know, and and, and trying to do that good work and put it in. And 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 Javier's proof that every vote counts, right? He could have been our rep like two years ago, had mm -hmm. four hundred and seventeen more people went out there and vote, and that's not a big number. That's absolutely not a big number. So every vote counts, and he's proof positive that every vote counts. So go on and vote. Go yeah. on and vote. All right. And vote for um, Javier Alvarez. Okay, you can start voting now if you have your mail-in ballot. Be you know, kind of be pay attention to that and make sure you want to mail it in. You know, because we want it to count. And um, early voting starts on Saturday, so you can start voting as early as Saturday if you want to go in person. And the last opportunity you have to vote for him is on August the eighteenth, um, twenty twenty. That's the last chance you have. You got time to do it now, but the absolute last day it needs to happen um, is August eighteenth, twenty twenty. Right? Yep. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you a so good much, one. Sandra. Thank you so I much. Really